What's going on YouTube? This is Frame. I'm Mariah Elise and of course I'm back again to talk to you guys about all things art. That's the art market, that's art market analysis, and just the art world in general. If this is your first time here, welcome, welcome, welcome to Frame. And if you've been rocking with me for a while, thank you guys for joining me time and time again. Today I want to talk to you guys about an auction that I think is wildly important. An auction that has taken all of the emerging artists, or a good lump sum of the emerging artists, put them into an auction and low key told us who to pay attention to. Some of these artists, I mean most of these artists I've already been watching for quite some time, but the fact that the name of this auction is titled New Now is telling us, hey, you better pay attention to these artists, you better pay attention to them now. Of course, I get extremely excited when I see African American and African artists within these exhibitions doing well and having some institutional support. So of course, we're gonna dive into that today. So you guys, get ready, get your pen, get your paper, take some notes and be ready to jot down the name of these artists and start paying attention to it. So there are really three reasons why this auction is so incredibly important to me. Number one, this auction really key points some artists that I've been watching for a while like Von Spann, Jamie Holmes, Godwin Champs. These are artists that I've been paying attention to, some of them for a few years and some of them for quite a few months. And I think it's time that everyone does. And of course, that's what this auction is telling us. Now, the second reason this auction is important is because like many auctions do, is really putting my eyes on a few artists or one artist in particular that I really want to start to watch. And number three, it's 100% an affirmation that I have to that it is absolutely necessary that I do an art market analysis for you guys and for myself of Micheline Thomas. The way that she's performing on the auction market, the way that she's performing on the primary market is great. And I have to share that with you. The auction sold about 7.5 million in sales, which um, on the large scheme of things really doesn't sound like a lot, but we have to take into account that it is a Phillips auction, it's not Christie's, it's not Sotheby's, it did happen in the daytime, and it is contemporary emerging artists. And I would say $7.54 million is pretty good when you put all those things together. There were 187 lots in this auction. It sold 168, meaning only 19 lots didn't sell. Now, if you guys know who Matthew Wong is, I haven't really talked about him on this channel, but he was the number one lot sold and it doesn't surprise. Like I said, like I'm hyped for, Micheline Thomas was the second highest hammer price and the third was Ernan Baez. I think I'm saying his name right, but what I'm excited about is Micheline Thomas. What I'm gonna be excited about is Micheline Thomas. She's a contemporary artist. She's been around for some time, but all of this is well-deserved. The only thing that I will always say that I will never be happy about is the artist does not get a piece of the pie. I think those things are starting to change. And because I think those things are starting to change, I'm starting to get a little bit more hype and a little bit more excited about seeing these artists be this high in auction. I think in the near, near future, you're gonna start seeing some of these artists get a percentage of what's selling on the secondary market. Now, like I said, guys, this auction is one of those auctions that is really important to watch. When you start seeing these auctions that say, new contemporary art, new now, uh, contemporary of the day, whatever you see like that, when it starts putting contemporary, emerging, newer artists that the works were created in 2017, 2016, 2019, 2020, that means that these artists are starting to gain some traction on the secondary mark, one. But that also means that people are kind of flipping their work. So you want to make sure, just to stay integral, like I always say, you want to really make sure that when these artists are getting over and reaching over to the secondary market, you want to make sure that they have some type of institutional support. You have to make sure that they have some type of backing and some type of base on the primary side that's going to protect their market and that's going to protect their career on the secondary side. Now let's talk about point number one. Those artists like Von Spann, Seeing his work, seeing his piece Dalmatian sell for 80% above the estimate makes me excited. I'm excited to see that. Watching Godwin Champ being a super, super newbie to the secondary market, I mean, to this day, I think he only has four pieces on auction. And on March 3rd, when this auction first started, I think this might have been the third piece that he had on auction. So to date, he has a sell through rate a four out of four. Even though the auction that he's in right now isn't over, it's already met its reserve, it's gonna sell, he's super new, only four pieces on the auction market, and in this 
auction in new now, he sold for 126% above his high estimate. If I'm not mistaken, it was an estimate, a low estimate of 6,000, a high estimate of 8,000, and it sold roughly around $22,000. And so also I hope that even alone gives you guys to have a little bit of money to play with somewhere in the low thousands to the high thousands to play with. You can participate in these, in these auctions. You, you might not win, but you can participate. And I would encourage you guys to participate in the auction, even if you know that you're not gonna win the lot. Even if you know the hammer size is gonna go well above what you can afford. And what that does is it just starts to get your feet wet just a little bit. For someone like Godwin Champ, I'm really, really hoping that like I was mentioning a little bit earlier, he gets the support on the primary side that he needs. I hope that his market really balances out so that we can continue to see him win. We can continue to see him on a secondary market. But I also will continue to hope that these artists get what they deserve on a secondary market. So I'm not all excited for nothing that just a collector has bought the work and sold the work and bought the work and sold the work. I wanna see these artists win. And then of course we see guys like Jamie Holmes go above his high estimate 180%. These numbers, they're crazy. And maybe in the near future when my subscriber account goes well beyond my expectance for our live stream and my reaction and we can watch these auctions together and see what happens. These guys that I just mentioned, they're gonna keep booming. I hope to see them keep booming. As long as we can collectively protect them all the way around, they'll be good. And when I say we, I mean all of us. We have to make a choice to see the artists that we want to support and then we have to patronize them always. Point number two, like I said, it put my eyes on works by Brandon Landers. I'd never heard of Brandon Landers before this. And maybe I'm behind, maybe he's someone that I just, maybe I seen, maybe it didn't catch my eye at the time, um, but I'm watching him in this auction and I see what he did and I'm amazed. And the piece, I believe, showed homage to his little brother. It was titled Baby Brody in His Bunny Onesie. And it was an estimate between six and eight thousand dollars and it sold for forty four thousand $100. Like I said, guys, honestly, I know absolutely nothing about Brandon Landers. I haven't done much research on Brandon Landers. I just know I've never seen his name. I know that I have no idea who this guy is or where he came from. And what I also know is they only expected an estimate of between six and $8,000. Now maybe they put that estimate in there so people could start playing, so people could start bidding. And that hammer price was just driven all the way up. Maybe that was expected. Maybe, and I would assume Phillips, the auction house, knows something that I don't know. But to put an estimate between six and $8,000 and then it drives all the way up to $44,000 for this new artist that I've never heard of, I'm excited to see that. And to my last and third point, we keeping it real short today. Day, Micheline Thomas. I don't know what to say. I mean, I wish I had, where's my lemon drop when I need it? I have to take a, a, a shot, a drink, something to her and to how her career is going because it's doing so well. Untitled number 10 had a high estimate of $90,000. How much you guys think it's so? Of course, these numbers that I'm throwing out there are with all of the fees involved. The high estimate was $90,000. It hammered at $889. Thousand dollars. I know I said it twice. That was not an accident. I thought maybe you needed to hear it again. That it hammered at eight hundred and eighty-nine thousand dollars with all of the fees. Now, without the fees, I think the price was around seven hundred and ten thousand dollars. All the same, insane. Now, argue with me on this. She needs a piece of that pie. She should have got a percentage of that and that's what we need to work on. I say all of this to say someone help. We need to get these artists the help that they need to get a piece of the secondary market pie. Now this auction, an auction of emerging artists had a total sell through of $7.5 million. I'm excited to see it. There's so many other artists that you guys should look at and watch out for that was in this auction. There are hundreds of lots and all I've talked about here was five or six different artists. There's so many different artists that you guys need to look at and read articles about them, follow them on their Instagram, go to their websites, look at their CV, watch what they're doing and figure out why exactly is it important that they were in this auction and how did they end up here? That's what you guys have to do. That's how you do the research. You look at the artist and then you dig into the artist and you figure out why. How? If you're an artist, you need to do that. Study their career, study how they did it. 
If you're a collector, absolutely do it because you need to know who you're collecting. You also want to know who to watch out for as a collector. And not only who to watch out for, who to go see. Who do you want to go see their shows? Who piques your interest? It's a service to only pay attention to the primary market. We need to pay attention to both because they're both going to introduce us to new artists. I hope you guys took some time to jot down all of the artists that I talked about today. I didn't really go deep into them, but hopefully it was an introduction and a really good introduction for you to one, watch the auctions, two, follow the artists that I was talking about today, and three, go and look at that auction new now and look at who the artists were in that auction, who you possibly may find some interest in that you wanna start paying attention to. Now the next auction that I'm gonna be talking about with you guys is called the Contemporary Art Day Auction and it's by the auction house Sotheby's. Now I really want you guys to start looking at the lots in this auction before I even cover it in a few days, but pay attention to the fact that Godwin Chaps is also a part of this auction. The second thing I want you guys to pay attention to is super early in the auction. There are about three days left until it closes out. And he has seven bids already in this auction. Most of the lots have zero bids and they won't start to have any until maybe Thursday evening um, after they've watched it for a while. But he has seven bids, seven bids. And I believe that it is already sitting at about $12,000 USD and I would expect it, I could be wrong, but I would expect him to uh, go about 200% over what his high estimate is, at least between 18 and $25,000 is what I expected to hammer at. We can see if I'm right. It's fun to see if I'm gonna be right or wrong, but I'm expecting him to hammer between 18 and $25,000. So let's wait for it. I'm excited about it. Guys, let me know what auctions you guys are following right now. Let me know what auction houses are your favorite. There are some smaller ones that I watch, um, but if there are some that you guys know about that I don't know about, let me know in the comments. All right, guys, that's all I have for now. I want you guys to go ahead and pay attention to that auction, the Contemporary Art Day auction on Sotheby's, and come back to the comments to let me know what lot you're watching until after I cover it. Like I said, I'm paying attention to, I'm Waco Buafo, of course, which at this point, he doesn't even have any bids, but you know how that goes. Guys, let me know what y'all think. Let me know what you guys want me to cover. If you find an auction that you want me to look at, if you want to see what my estimates, what my thoughts are, what my estimates might be, let me know. We can take it from there. All right, guys, y'all have a good day, and I'll talk to y'all soon. Peace.